a nice beat on earnings per share. Congratulations on that. Did fine on revenue. What's driving it? Thanks, David. A solid second quarter in line with our expectations. Uh, what you're really starting to see here, David, is the earnings power of our truck franchise. We are in the early days of our rollout, and we're starting to see very positive uh, reception to Silverado, the Sierra. And uh, as we roll out uh, the rest of the truck lineup, we're uh, very confident in the momentum here. And we've been very disciplined in this environment, and we've uh, taken cost actions. You're starting to see the um, effects of that rolling through, and we're, the team is navigating through the headwinds to produce the results that you see today. And what does that do to margins? Typically, you make more money off of a truck than some other passenger vehicle. What does it do to margins, and what's it doing to your product mix? Yeah, overall, I'd say um, North American margins, if you see, this quarter we delivered 10.7 percent margins, very strong. And uh, to your point, we a lot of that was driven by the strength of uh, the truck franchise and what you're seeing in the uh, the mix of our high-content crew caps that we uh, that we delivered during the quarter, as well as um, uh, strong uh, average transaction prices that we're seeing. So across the board, uh, positive from trucks, as well as our crossovers. We're up 17 percent uh, from a crossover perspective year over year. and um, our new launches there are doing really well as well. So I'd say uh, overall, very good story in North America. Uh, going off beyond North America now to China, because General Motors distinguished itself by having a fairly substantial operation, I think it's fair to say, in China. China has been having some trouble. How's GM doing in China? Our equity income, we did uh, face some headwinds this quarter. Um, going in, we expected this environment to be volatile, David, um, as you know. And um, as you uh, think about the second quarter, there was the overall economic slowdown. The industry was down on the back of that. Uh, there were significant pricing pressures. There was a change in emission standard from China 5 to China 6 that drove some of the pricing. Um, so as you think about this backdrop, we're executing within that. We're being uh, more disciplined on inventory. We cut inventory by 10 percent. We've taken cost actions. And importantly, we're getting ready for our significant launches that are coming up later this year. And uh, that's going to be in the heart of the growth segments, where two-thirds of our launches are going to be SUVs. So longer term, as we think about this market, we're constructive. We have strong brands, and we have very strong partners as well. How long is longer term when it comes to China? As you look at the second half of the year, will that be better than the first half in line? Where do you expect? Well, from obviously the macro is difficult to predict, but uh, from our own uh, uh, plans and the launches that I mentioned, despite the headwinds, we're expecting earnings to be uh, generally in line second half versus first half, so roughly flat. And, and more generally for General Motors, uh, where are you on your earnings per share guidance at this point? You had been, I think, at between six fifty and seven dollars earnings per share. Where are you now? So we are reiterating our guidance today, uh, $6.50 to $7 of automotive free cash flow of uh, 4 .5 to $6 billion. Uh, we're on track to achieve that. Uh, the second half will be meaningfully stronger than the first half because of the launches that I talked about, as well as the absence of downtime, a significant amount of downtime that we took in the first half of the year. And the cost uh, efficiencies are going to continue as well. So if you think about what the team is achieving, obviously um, there will be headwinds and volatility around the world. But what we're focused on is we have a very defined strategy and a deliberate strategy, and we're delivering to that. I'm interested in how the General Motors situation fits into the larger picture we're seeing across the country. We had the Fed yesterday come out and cut rates by 25 basis points, as you know. It's a little ambiguous whether they're going to cut further or not. Does that affect GM's business? Do the low interest rates and the sense of accommodation, not just in the United States but around the world, is that helping your business? I'd say um, our outlook for the industry, the auto industry overall, is north of 17 uh, million. That's, uh, as you know, David, it's a very healthy level um, to begin with. And on the margin, uh, when you see cuts, it's obviously going to help the consumer overall, um, and it'll help auto loan payments. So to the extent that um, our vehicles are financed, it's going to be a tailwind from that perspective. But we remain constructive on the industry at uh, 17 million or higher, and uh, within that, the truck segment as well. And consumers overall in the United States have done well. What do you see in the Consumer. Do you see delinquencies in payments on loans? Do you see resistance to keeping the prices up? Because I know General Motors has tried to avoid some of those, those uh, uh, sales, as it were. Our financing arm continues to do really well, and if you look across a variety of metrics, whether it's delinquencies or uh, other credit losses or uh, residual values, all of them remain online, which points to um, a, uh, a strong cons customer confidence as well as um, um, an overall strength in the business. So all of our, our metrics are on track, and uh, we're, uh, we're uh, feeling good about that.